Okay, we're back with the Lighthouse Labs coding challenge. It's day 15. Let's go. Okay, in the last video we looked at day 5 of the coding challenge, I'm going to put a link in the description. And today we're going to take a look at day 15 of the coding challenge. Again, it, this is a JavaScript coding problem, it's part of the 21 day coding challenge by Lighthouse Labs. And they're getting a little bit more difficult towards the end, but this is what we want. Alright, we're back at challenge 15 of the 21 day coding challenge. Um, this is uh, your little code editor on the 21 day coding challenge website and today's question is finding the first rock in the given grid. So just a quick reminder, we have this grid here, um, rows have numbers, columns have letters and in JavaScript this is how it looks like. Now before we jump into today's question, uh, I want to review uh, something very interesting and important uh, from challenges 13 and 14. Um, if you remember, challenge 13 was to find uh, all rocks and all currents, meaning we had to scan our um, grid for um, the currents, which have this symbol here, and um, the rocks, which have, I think, this symbol it was. Um, so you can already see that those tasks, writing those two functions, um, have a lot of similarities. Essentially, you're doing the exact same thing. You're uh, scanning the whole grid um, uh, row by row or uh, column by column um, to find a symbol. Whenever you find the symbol, you push it into an array. And at the end of the, of the whole procedure, you return this array. Now, again, the only difference was the symbol. So one of the important principles in every programming language is uh, deduplication um, and trying not to produce duplicate code. Um, there are multiple reasons for that. One of them is just uh, when we change code which is similar or duplicated in one place, we may forget to change it in another place. Um, you produce more code than necessary. Now I'm going to show you what I mean by deduplicating code and uh, sharing code between functions. Because of this very similar problem statement um, for 13 and 14, I wrote one function, which is called all of type, which contains this whole traversal and iteration logic. So in all of type, um, I'm doing the two nested, the nested for loops, which uh, push into this array. And then, because we needed all rocks, all currents, and all ships, I'm just calling all of types with a parameter. And this parameter is the character we're looking for. So the rocks, the current, and the ship. And the naive solution would have been to have three functions which all contain this stuff. And in here, we would just have the character of the ship, the current, or the rock hard-coded. But it's really easy, right? We can just have one parameter, have the parameter in here, um, which does the comparison. And we reuse this piece of code for three different use cases. OK, back to today's challenge. Um, we want to find the first rock uh, of this whole grid. So again, let's take a look at the grid and let's try to disambiguate the problem first, meaning we want to understand the problem first, and then we want to find an approach, not thinking about code yet. We want an approach, the algorithm, so to say. And only then we dive into coding and we put it into this editor. So first rock uh, in this example would mean we look at the first row. And if this is the rock, exam, uh, the rock sign, the rock character, our solution should return D1 as the coordinate of the first rock. So may I, let me make sure, yeah, rocks have this character. Cool. So we already have two or three methods, actually, three methods which give us all 
those symbols, all those characters, they return an array of either rocks, currents, or ships. We could now just take those functions and look into the returning array and pick the first one. That's probably the, the most straightforward solution. And we can reuse existing code. In fact, we can, for, the whole, for this whole solution, we can reuse a lot of existing code, which is always a good thing. So um, let us write this function here. It has to be called first rock. Um, and then what was the approach we just talked about? We want to reuse an existing function because it gives us an array of all the rocks and we're just going to pick the first one out of it. So let's have a rocks array and in here we're calling all rocks. Let's make sure this is the right function name. If you want to be sure and you don't have a, an IDE which would highlight errors, you can just copy paste come back here, do a paste, oh, wrong, come back here and do a paste, and um, we just pick the first element, right? So we can return with rocks and zero. And that's, uh, that's it. That picks our first element out of this array and returns it. And in this case, it's sufficient for um, this challenge. But an immediate thought uh, of uh, you know every programmer should be, what are the edge cases that I could be missing? So in this case, and a very obvious edge case could be, uh, what happens if there are no rocks in this whole uh, grid, right? So. At first, we need to check if our functions, which we're using, uh, could cover those uh, edge cases. And if not, we may want to cover those edge cases in the, in the function we just wrote. So let's assume there is no rock in this whole grid. Um, we could try to catch this, um, this situation. And usually, it makes sense to catch it early on. And then it depends on what you're programming. It depends on your, your use case. You may want to handle this with um, a log statement. You know, you could do a, um, you could handle this in here. You could say um, if, if you're returning null or you're returning undefined, um, you, should, you have, have to do it here, right? So if, um, if rocks dot length, um, would be uh, zero, then you could do a console log, for example. You could also try to catch those situations earlier, um, maybe in one of these functions here. It depends on your use case. It depends on uh, what framework you're developing in and what environment you're developing in. But anyways, think about it. Um, it's important to know how your code behaves in edge cases like this one. Okay, so we're quite happy with our solution today. Um, this will solve challenge 15, but we may want to think about an optimization or we may want to think about um, time complexity, in fact. In computer science, time complexity is a fairly abstract term because we don't talk about milliseconds or actual units of time, but we try to compare how long your program will run um, and how long will it take to solve a given problem, um, always in comparison with the problem statement, so the input size. So what is the input size in this case? It's this whole grid, which is in reality just a couple of uh, arrays, right? So this thing here. Now, first rock is um, using existing functions, but those functions, they traverse through every single uh, cell, so through every single element of all those arrays. We're only interested in the first rock, which in this case is this symbol here, correct? So it's a bit of a waste that we are using functions, which um, you see in here, we go through all of the array, 
So we, we do all of this, well, we go down until this last element, only to then pick the very first one. So we could have saved ourselves this whole traversal here. Of course, uh, in the worst case, and this is something you will hear a lot, uh, in the worst case scenario would be that the first rock is actually in the very last cell down here. Then, uh, even with our optimization, we would uh, need to traverse through the whole, um, through, through all of those uh, arrays. Um, but in, in this example right here, we could save ourselves a lot of time. So the approach you uh, may want to take to optimize this is uh, instead of pushing every element into this array and only at the very end picking the first one, you could actually try to, you know, in here, um, you would rewrite this thing a little bit. And in here, when you, when you find this first occurrence of this character, you could already do a return um, of, um, of this. Right, so imagine this is not here. Uh, this would give you, oh, we need to put, this would already return uh, the right character code. And in this case, it would not return an array, it would return a string immediately. So all that is to say, um, you can stop as soon as you find this character. And in the worst case, you're still traversing through this whole uh, grid, but in an average case, you will only um, iterate through the, fir the first few elements or maybe 50% of the, of the whole thing. Okay, this was day 15 of the coding challenge. I hope you liked this little walkthrough. Um, leave any comments or questions you have in the comment section below. Um, it's only six more days to go, and I really wonder who wins the trip to San Francisco and the tour through the Silicon Valley. Best of luck.